Having the right high quality images to use for your brand is more important than ever. Visual communication is an effective and powerful tool for growing your business, your profile, or your brand. But we're not all photographers and we don't all have access to a suite of brand photos. So we rely on stock imagery. And that can be really tricky to find good images that work for your brand. So today, I'm gonna to show you some tips and tricks on finding and using stock images, making them fit with your brand perfectly and effectively. Stock photography gets a bit of a bad reputation, but let's be honest, it's kind of deserved. If you look at any stock libraries, there are so many images that are really dreadful. But unless you're a professional photographer or it's something that you've studied, it's not always easy to explain or to even know why a certain image is better than another image. It can be really time consuming, looking through images to find the right one and then figuring out how to use it to its best effect. But it is worth it. Research shows that materials that use imagery to convey a message or understanding are 43% more effective than materials that use words alone. So how do you find good stock photography for your brand or for your materials? Well, the good news is that in the last 10 or 15 years, there've been such a huge growth of stock libraries that have really good high quality images for you to use either paid or for free. One of the things that makes it much easier to find the right images for you is to find the right stock image library. Now, some of these image libraries specialize in a certain type of photo. Some of them are more corporate, some are directed at a specific audience or age group. And if you can find the one that connects with you and your brand and your audience, it obviously makes it a lot easier to find images that you can use quickly and easily rather than spending hours having to trawl through millions of photos of all sorts of different types. I know that can sound a little daunting, but I've got something that'll help you do that. If you go to the link that's on the screen right now or in the description below the video, I have created a free PDF for you to download. And in that PDF, it's got the list of 11 stock libraries where you can get different images um, of all sorts of types and themes. Half of them are free, another half are subscription or paid, but they're all reasonably priced and I've used all of those libraries for materials for my clients and for my own personal work. But no matter which library you're using, there are a few things you can do that will help you find better stock imagery. And the first obviously is to think about which search terms you use when you're looking for photographs. Now for me, I feel like you get the best images when you stay away from um, very specific direct references for things. So for example, if you're looking for images on creativity, just typing in creativity will obviously bring up loads of images. But there are so many different things within that, it could take you a long time to find the one you want. I would think more about what the feeling is you're trying to get across. Is this about excitement and chaotic creative energy? Or is this about uh, creating quietly and writing and thoughtful creation? Or is it about embracing your inner child and the creativity that comes with that? If you think about the emotional feel you're trying to get, you can narrow that down using those kind of emotional terms which will create images that have more of a feel to them and those trigger emotions which help build brand loyalty. The ideal is to try and stay away from cliched images. If there is a search term that brings up 50 images that all have exactly the same topic or the same structure or composition, then you should probably stay away from those because it means everybody will be using them and it means it doesn't get people's thinking, it's just a very obvious interpretation of what you're talking about. Try and think of things, as I say, that has more of an emotion connected to it. And from my own personal side, one of the things I think you should always stay away from is images that actually have the word that you're searching for in the image. So if you're searching for an image that represents bravery, if there is an image that has bravery in big letters on it, that's the one I would stay away from. It's too obvious and it feels just a little cheap to me. Things you should look for are photos that have an interesting kind of crop to them. So things that are shot from an interesting angle or show an interesting perspective on the subject. Also look for things that have some depth to them. So that depth of field or that soft focus effect that you get with some photographs where one portion is in focus and the others are a bit blurred, that generally is very interesting to the human eye and draws you in. And it also introduces that idea of depth, which is great in a photograph. 
Another thing is when you're looking at how those photos are composed or how people are posed in them, look for things that are a little more interesting than just somebody dead center. In general with photography, if somebody is on to, off to the left or off to the right, it becomes more interesting and actually on a very practical note, it often becomes more usable because you have space to add text or other elements when you're using it in documents or presentations or even on a website. Now, one of the things that's been shown to really connect with people is when we see photographs that have other humans in it. Emotionally, we react to it and it also makes us feel like we're seeing people similar to ourselves. So it's important to have photographs that have humans in. However, a lot of stock photography really comes across as incredibly fake. Now, let's be honest, all stock photography pretty much is to some degree staged or posed. But that doesn't mean that you can't find images where people seem to be genuinely expressing emotion rather than feeling very staged, being very frozen in time. The idea behind photography is to capture the feeling of a moment. And that's the thing I would think is probably the best to remember when you're searching for images. You are trying to find stock images that capture a moment and the emotion and feeling in that moment, not just something that is a posed photograph taken with no feeling in it. It makes a huge difference. Even searching for the same search terms, you can see the difference in the types of images that are just posed with no emotion and those that feel like they've actually captured a moment in time. Nothing kills trust with people more than them looking at images and feeling that they're fake, feeling like they're being lied to or something is being disguised. That's a sure way to kill any kind of trust that you're building with your audience. So it's worth putting in the time to try and find images that feel a little more relatable and a little more natural. One of the biggest mistakes I see in people using stock photos on their websites and in the materials is that there isn't any consistency to the photographs. Now, as I said, if you don't have your own brand library of photographs, then it is difficult sometimes to find that kind of consistency. But we're going to go through a few tips and tricks on how to do that. But the reason it's important is because it then starts to build an overall feel for your brand or for your materials as people go through that site. Now, that kind of consistency can be because the photographs are by the same person or from the same photo library. It can be because there is a consistent color theme run running through or it could even be because they're all close-ups or they're all images that have people's hands. But it's important to think about a mood and a color theme that you're going to include in your images. If you have brand colors, obviously, then that color theme needs to reflect your brand colors or at very least the colors that you're using on the website or sales page that you have already created for these to go into. One of the things that I think works really well is instead of trying to find loads of images with a specific color in all of them, is to use a lot of neutral images which you can just slightly tone to reflect your brand colors. And I'll show you how we can do that in a few minutes. But either light or dark images that are neutral in kind of beiges, blacks, whites, grays, those kind of things are usually very easy to then make fit with your brand because you can add color graphics or color text or even an overlay of some sort. And it suddenly ties them all in and makes them look a bit more consistent. So using neutrals as a kind of theme with just pops of color can be a really powerful way of bringing in images that are consistent but still tie into your brand colors. So let's go through a couple of tips on how to find some kind of consistency in your images. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how I do that. First of all, using a free stock library called Unsplash, which is the one that I probably use day to day for my work and my clients work. It's completely free to use. There is a subscription tier, but I've never used that. And they have, in my opinion, the highest quality of free stock photography available today. And then we're also going to have a look how to do that using Canva and images from Canva's stock image library. Now Canva stock image library actually includes an image library called Pixels, who they in fact bought a couple of years ago, who also have a wide range of photographs and that's now all to be searched and found through Canva's image library. So I'm going to show you how to find consistent images using those two tools. So let's start with Unsplash, the free stock image library. So this is the home page and you'll see that there are already categories along the top here that you can click to search, but they have a really great search function built into Unsplash. So if I just search in here and I'm going to search for dried flowers and we'll see what comes up. So you'll see that it brings up a huge amount of photographs that have dried flowers in them. From these images that we've seen here, I would like to find some images that have this yellow in them as well. 
So if I click on that image, the first thing you'll notice is that if you scroll down a little, it shows related photos. So these could be photos taken by the same person. They could be photos that uh, have the same topic or the same keywords. But it's one way to find images that are at least consistent with what you're searching for. So you can see there are obviously images that fit really well with the one that I have just found. So I could just click on those and download those to use them and that way get a kind of consistent theme and look and feel through the images I'm using. Another thing you can do is at the top left on that photograph when you've opened it, you can click to go to the person's profile or portfolio. And there you can see all the images that they have taken. Now the benefit to doing this is that often photographers tend to take a lot of photos in one shoot. So if they're on one location, they'll take a lot of different photos from different angles in the same lighting with the same camera. And so you tend to be able to find three or four images that have a very consistent look and feel, that add interest and all feel like they've been created for that piece of material. The other thing that I wanted to show you, which I think is great about Unsplash is, when you've searched for that search term like dried flowers, on the top here, you'll see that there is an option to click on collections. Now, when you click on that, it basically takes you to collections that other users have made that include the terms that you've searched for. And this again becomes a really easy way to find consistent photographs that work with what you're looking for. So you can see some of these have the kind of very brown and yellow dried aesthetic. Scroll down a little and these have more pops of color in with the dried flowers. These ones definitely have yellow in and are a little more autumnal. So you can search through these collections. It tells you how many photos are in there. And then if that's something that looks like it will work with your brand, you can then click on that, go into that collection, and you can just use any of the images in that collection as they're all part of the same free stock image library that's part of Unsplash. Now in Canva, there's another very interesting tool that makes it easy to find images that fit with your brand colors. So in Canva, I found this photograph here, which is this kind of pinks and greens in this photo of some flowers. And it's got nice depth. It's got this kind of blurred bokeh effect in the background. And I think it could be really beautiful for use with a piece of materials that I'm creating. Now on the left hand side here, I've just got a gray block, um, which I'm going to use to pick up a color from the photograph. So if I go to the color block up here and add a color, I can use the color picker, highlight somewhere on the flower and I will pick up that pink and you can see it fills that box there. So that's the color that I wanna use as a basis for all of the photographs that I wanna include, say for example, on a website. The great thing is in Canva, if I click on that color again, I can just go to the color and copy and paste this hex code which is the code that starts with the little hashtag, and that's the code for this color. Then if I go to the Photos tab and I want to search photos, I can actually go to these little slider icons on the right hand side and filter photos by adding a new color reference, pasting in that hex code and applying. Now it will filter all photos that have that color or similar colors. So immediately you can see there is an entire selection of images that are similar or have a similar color to the color that I've just asked for. I can then filter that further by adding the search term flowers. And you can see on the right, the little one indicates there is already a filter applied. You'll see it now brings up a load of images which have the same pink color that I've selected, but are all of flowers. And this means that I could then pick two or three from here, bring them into my document, and it gives me a range of images that look like they all tie together because they're the same color, but they're all a little different, but make it feel like there is one consistent kind of family of images. So it's a really helpful tool is to choose the color. And of course, if you have brand colors, you can just paste your brand color in there and see what images it brings up. So let's talk a little bit about editing images. So one of the things that makes a big difference when you're using stock images is if you are able to edit them just a little bit to make them feel like they're different and that they're customized to your brand. Now, sometimes that can be as simple as cropping an image in a certain way, but there are other simple ways that we can edit those images without needing to know Photoshop or be a professional photo retoucher. And I'm gonna show you a few really simple tools that are built into Canva so that you can use them to make your images perfect for your brand. Here I've got an image of somebody just painting a wall. 
And I've actually split it into two parts so that I can show you as I edit one what it looks like compared to the original. These are the original colors and on the left hand side here I've got three colors that for example um, are part of my brand. And there's two grays and a blue. Now this image doesn't feel like it really fits with that. The gray is close but the beige is a little too yellow. So now how would I make this fit into my brand? Well it's very simple using one of Canva's tools. If I click on the image and I then at the top go to edit photo, it brings up Canva's image editing tools. And one of the most powerful but often overlooked is just the simple adjust sliders. So at the top here I click adjust and then I can change the temperature or the tint of images. There are a load of other controls here but for this we're going to look at temperature and tint. Now basically all that means is how warm or cool the image kind of feels on the spectrum from yellow or orange through to blue. So I want this to feel a little cooler. I want it to represent that blue that's in those brand colors. So all I do is slide the slider to the left to the cool side and you'll see how it very subtly changes the tone of the neutrals in that image. Now if I click off you can see it hasn't massively changed the image. The person's hair and the person still looks very natural, but it has given it more of a cooler feel to the right hand side. That small change can make all the difference in making a photo feel like it fits with your brand and is customized for your materials. Something that Canva have recently added into their image tools is a very simple ability to edit different parts of the image. Now this only works really well with images that have a fairly plain background or at least have a subject that kind of stands out from the background. But let me show you how powerful it can be. I love the photograph of this person. I would love to use this uh, for my brand. However, I have no yellow in my brand colors and I love the pink, but I really don't want to use yellow at all. Well, the great thing is if I click on it and click edit photo again and go back to those adjust tools, Canva has now given me an option to select the area that I want to edit. I can edit the whole image, or if I select this pull down menu, I can edit the foreground or the background. So for this one, I would like that background to be gray because my colors are pink and gray. If I scroll down, one of the options I have within this color section is vibrance and saturation. Now for this image, if I want to just have the background gray, I can drag the saturation slider all the way to the left and you'll see how the background in that image changes to gray. It takes all the color out of it, but it leaves the subject in the pink, natural skin tones, brown hair. And it now means that that image is so much more usable for me just by using that one slider to differentiate the background and the subject and then desaturate that. If you do have to use multiple images from different sources and they are looking really inconsistent, you end up with a selection of photos like this where they're all perfectly good photos but they look completely different and have no consistency. Now you could obviously use the tools I've just shown you to try and tone down the background of each of these and that would work really, really well. But there is another option, particularly for headshots, it works really well and that is to edit the photograph and then just desaturate that photograph using the adjust tools. You then suddenly have what feels like a consistent set of images because they are all in grayscale. And then you could go to the elements library of Canva and just use maybe a block or a frame of color and you can suddenly create a consistency of color and feel for your materials just using Canva's elements within their library. So some of the graphic elements or shapes and desaturating the images so that they all fit. It's a nice way of making sure that you only use your brand colors if you want something that's very specific about that. Um, and as I say, an easy way to get consistency in images that you've pulled in from all over. One of the ways to make really good use of images, particularly from stock libraries, is to use images in the background. Maybe you're gonna have text over it or you're gonna have a quote over it or something like that. Now, the first thing to think about is that it doesn't have too much detail. And that's why things like patterns or landscapes tend to work better because they don't have a specific focus and lots of sharp detail, which will interfere with the text or the subject that you're overlaying over that background. So one of the things to look for is just images that have less detail or are wider shots 
that don't draw your attention to a specific thing. Obviously things that use soft focus or blurred backgrounds are really helpful um, and because those don't detract as well, but they can form a lovely texture behind things. And there are a couple of other things you can do to make those backgrounds usable or make those images usable as a background for certain elements. I found this image of a tropical beach, which I think is beautiful, and I want to use this, but I found that the text seems to get a little bit lost because there's different lines and different shades and the rocks and everything. So a couple of things you can do in Canva that are really quick and easy to do. You could actually go to edit the photo and on the bottom here where it says FX, you could actually click on the blur effect and then you could blur this whole photograph. It does soften all the details, so you still have the colors and you can play with the intensity to give yourself the feeling of it being out of focus and then it won't contrast so much or clash with the text or anything that you overlay it. Using the same image, another thing you can do in Canva is to overlay the same image with different effects. So for example, if we take this image, I am just going to copy and paste it so that I have a duplicate and then I'm gonna put it directly over and I'm going to crop the top one to about halfway through. I've got those lined up and what I can do is I can actually use that blur effect on just half of the image and you'll see that it creates almost the effect of having a layer of kind of clouded glass over the image. And that you can then change with the saturation, change with the brightness and contrast and you can make it feel like there is this kind of transparent glass over the image and it makes a perfect place for you to overlay text, etc. Another one of Canva's tools that can be used really effectively and just takes a little getting used to and experimenting with is their Duotone tool. And I'm gonna show you how we can use that to make an image fit with our brand. So looking at this image, if I wanted to use this for my brand, um, it's a beautiful image, but maybe I don't have any of this red color or burgundy color in my brand, and so I don't want to use that. Now, using the sliders or the warmth and cool sliders are probably not going to change the image enough because there is this big block of color. So one of the best things that you can do with this is to use Canva's Duotone tool. If you go to the FX and scroll along, you'll see there's a Duotone tool. If you click on that, it basically changes all the dark parts of the, the photograph to one color and all the light parts of the photograph to another color. If, for example, my brand was all about blues, then I don't want that burgundy. I want something that's cooler and has more blue in it. So I'll choose the sea blue option to start with. The nice thing is that you can actually change these colors. So if you have a specific brand color, a brand blue that you wanted to use, you could paste it in or you can just use this little slider and play around with what you would like to use for the photo. You can still play around with the tones, lighten or darken them, and basically you can use that really beautiful image in your materials, even though the original image had completely different colors that wouldn't fit with your brand at all. Now these are just a few of the simple tools in Canva that you can use to customize and make stock images your own. There are other tools and new tools that they're introducing all the time for you to play with and experiment with, but I know that that can be time consuming. So hopefully these tools will make it easier and quicker for you to find and create images that fit more perfectly for your brand and your materials. One of the key thing with selecting imagery and especially photographs for any of your brand materials or websites is to be really intentional about the images that you use. As I said before, research shows that people really connect emotionally to images and they grasp images very quickly upon seeing them. So it's worth spending the time to get the right images that have the right impact when people visit or read your materials. It can do a lot to grow brand loyalty and also to make sure that people understand the message you're putting across really quickly and easily and build brand recognition. I really hope these tips and tools have been helpful. If you found this interesting, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like and subscribe button below this video. And also please sign up for my weekly design digest called Meaningful Creations. It goes out every week with tips and tricks and it updates you on what tutorials are out. And I would really appreciate it if you would join that and become part of the community. That's it today, folks. Have a lovely week. Bye.